Hello there and welcome to my workshop in the middle of a heat wave so it's really hot. Now then, you may remember a few episodes ago I put a video up and uh, it was my daring neck rescue should I uh, keep it or bin it and um, well a couple of folks said bin it and in a way they were probably right because it's not perfect and in actual fact the uh, the last uh, gentleman that commented gave a very good reason why the neck is probably not going to work and I and I really respect that um, and I appreciate it now so I thought I thought it was worth mentioning because I've said this a few times that I'm not a luthier by any stretch of the imagination and I build guitars because I enjoy building them and um, what I'm trying to do with these video series is trying to encourage people who perhaps are slightly worried about trying to tackle something like a guitar because it seems to be oh, just too complicated and to say to them look it actually doesn't really matter have a go at something and um, you'll be surprised um, how well it turns out. Now, a sort of a demonstration of that, I've got my autumn guitar, which is literally made out of the cheap wood that you get on a fence. And um, the, the, the neck is just the, the, the fence post, effectively. Now then, this thing goes out of tune, just like that, um, because the wood is not stable. And that's one of the problems that I'm going to have, I believe, with this neck that I'm making. Um, but you can tune it and it plays quite nice. The, um, <laughs> the sound from the guitar itself is no good, so I'm playing it through an amplifier through the piazza. In actual fact, this guitar now is going to be mounted on the wall of my uh, new home studio because <laughs> I'm taking the advice of Emmanuel, whose guitar I featured a few weeks back, who said, if a guitar goes wrong, don't worry, you can always stick it on the wall. And um, I think it's probably the best place to put this guitar, although I am building a display that will allow me to take it off the wall and play it if I want to. But no, so just coming back to this, yeah, I am going to pursue uh, this neck, carry on with this neck, even though possibly this neck isn't going to work uh, for various reasons. The, the wood is going to move uh, in this area here and uh, it's going to sort of stretch and cause all sorts of tuning issues. But do you know what? Stick with me because we'll just see what happens with it. Um, it's going to be a bolt on neck, so if push comes to shove, um, I can bin this neck or stick it on the wall <laughs> and um, and make a new one. Um, but for me, this is all about a learning exercise. And um, well, I hope you guys are learning from my mistakes because, you know, that's part of the fun, isn't it? Anyway, I've got some work to do on this. So let's get going. Whew. Not sure how we're going to do this. Okay, well, I've spent a little while sanding this down. Um, and I think it's reasonably flat now. I'll be honest with you, it's not perfect. It, it goes off, it goes down a little bit at this end. But the rest of it is pretty good. I mean, we're talking a fraction of a millimetre, I think. I shine a light through it I can just see little gaps there um, I quite honestly I don't think I'm going to get any better so I'm going to do the fret work but before I do that I've got to clean out some of these slots and because I've made my life much more difficult now because I've got the binding on the edge I've also got to saw through this um, shell I'm going to try and do it with this Dremel very gently. Okay, get my mask on. Well, 
well it's done the job i'm just hoping that i can cover up the uh the gaps there with um with the frets anyway i've now got to clean out these fret slots this is just a piece of hacksaw blade stuck into a piece of wood Well, it's best to do one side then turn the neck round and do the other. Now it gets a little tricky when you get to situations like this where I've got glue in the slot and you know I found the best way to do this is really do it quite lightly and just just keep going back and forth over it. I'm just dragging it back. Uh, until you clear that glue out of the the slot. It's going to be really interesting doing this one because that slot is not straight, is it? Oh dear, 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 dear. Okay, it's time to get the frets in. Um, I've got my fret wire, I've got my cutter, a little hammer to bang it in, a block which I use to give it a good wallop, uh, and I've got my um, fret tang filing block here which will just take the tangs off so uh, it'll fit in within the binding. I'm not going to film all this because I've filmed it quite a few times before and I shall put a link to the video that I last did a fret job um, up in the corner there and down in the description so if you want to go and have a look at that uh, otherwise I'll see you in a few minutes see you in a few minutes I mean who was I kidding it's now a few days later and I've fretted the uh, the neck and I've polished and dressed all the frets so let me reveal it to you here we are and it's it's looking nice I mean to be honest with you the reason I didn't go through the whole process with you is that there are a lot more people out there who can do it much better than I can I don't get that really perfect finish on the frets and I have tried but I uh, yeah I get it to a standard that I'm sort of happy with but it's uh, it's not as good as some of the marvellous luthiers that are out there watch Ben Crow to get a good idea of how to do it anyway it's done and um, yeah right well now I need to concentrate on the body now I've had to um, take the depth of the guitar down by about five mil and I've done that on the radius surface there by sticking some sandpaper on and uh, well spending quite a little bit of time rubbing it round until I got it down to about the level I wanted. I've got the depth of the ribs to just about where I want them. This is approximately the depth of the body top so if I slide that underneath there the neck just sits a little bit above it which is ideal because I need to drop that into the block a little bit. Now then I want to make the tail stop and the bridge uh, because I need to know the height of well the bridge in order to fit the neck and I'm thinking of using some of this Avancol wood to make those two items uh, I've got a couple of pieces here not quite sure which is the best ones to use but um, I think I'm going to start with the tail stop first because I think that's going to be the most complex now I also want to embed some aluminium in the uh, tail stock that's so that I can earth all the strings at that point and then I don't have to worry about trying to earth them at this bridge uh, so how do we go about this okay in, or in order to cope with the strings the tail stop at the very end as the strings leave it needs to be at least 70 mil wide 
and at the other end which is uh, approximately 105 mil back um, it needs to be 20 mil uh, I'm gonna, if I can find a circle with 20 mil diameter that would do the job and let's just draw a circle round there and then I want it to curve to the front there and then mirror image on the other side and then ideally we want to just just dip that in a little to the mirror Okay, so that's the shape I'm after. Okay, that actually took two goes. That was the first one I did. Then I realized that actually there's not really enough room for the strings to be held in with that one. So I've done a wider one, which is better, but it's just occurring to me that this one may be a good template for the aluminium. In fact, I think it needs to be a little bit thinner than this. Okay, so here's my idea. The cross hatched piece is actually going to be aluminium and this piece is going to be bent back. In fact, I think I need to take that a little bit wider and I've drawn it there. So let's uh, just extend that out a bit. That's going to be bent up and that's going to be all hidden within the wooden external uh, cover. Now I'll just mark the position of the holes. Okay, so now I'm going to mark the fretboard radius. Now I use a 16 inch and this is a 15 inch, but it is close enough. Um, I just want to allow enough room for the, the end of the strings. I think that should be okay, I'm, I'm doing this by eye. So the point where that crosses, I'll need to drill holes. All I need to do is bend this piece of wood on the line. What I also need to do is bend this piece of aluminium on the line. Hopefully that should do. Ooh, I'll tell you what guys, I came out here yesterday to do some work on the guitar. I think I filmed two shots cutting this bit of metal out and that was enough because it was, I think the hottest day in the UK like forever yesterday and it was yeah just too hot so um i'm back again today it's a little bit cooler and i've had a delivery from uh, ch guitar parts they're based in tyne and weir and i get most of my stuff from them because they're reasonably priced and uh always very helpful so i've got uh, a humbucker which i'm going to use at the bridge i've got some um, six inline tuners. I've gone for miniature ones um, this time and I've got a push-pull volume control so I can do some clever stuff with the uh, humbucker there. So all those bits have arrived which is really good. So I've got to get on with the tail stop. Here we go I think it's time to mark out the uh, template on the wood. 
I've been watching um, Daisy Tempest. I don't know if you know about Daisy. She's a, a London-based luthier. Just started up in the last couple of years and um, producing very sort of high-end acoustic instruments. And uh, she was recently featured on Anderton's channel, uh, Captain Meets Daisy. And a really fascinating uh, lady. Um, she's got a lot of information about making acoustic guitars and the woods and uh, various things that go into that. And uh, in one of her last videos, she was doing a tap test on some woods, um, spruce, different types of spruce, just to see how it sounds. And uh, I've never done that. So <laughs> I came out into the workshop and grabbed hold of my piece of cherry and uh, held it up to my ear and started bashing it. Now you probably can't hear that, but this sounds just like a bass drum. <laughs> I don't know what that's going to mean on the guitar. It's a very narrow body guitar, so I don't think it's going to make much difference. But uh, yeah one of those interesting things. Now, I'm not entirely sure how this is all going to hang together but I want to embed this metal into the bottom of this tail stop. So let me just mark round where I think that's going to go. Now I did a silly thing in the heat yesterday. I wasn't thinking. I mean some would argue I'd I don't think very good anyway, but um, I, I bent up the end of this piece, um, which will have to be bent up at some point anyway. But of course, that's <laughs> created all sorts of problems for me because ideally I need to put this that way round uh, because it, it isn't, it's not symmetrical despite my best efforts. Um, but <laughs> I'm just going to have to cope with that. I think I'm just going to have to do a bit of jiggery pokery when I, when I route out that slot for to fit this. So anyway, let's see if I can do something with that. Now, first things first, I need to route a slot in the end that this end piece will slot into. So I've got a very fine route a bit on the Dremel, and I'm just going to go back and forth and see if I can create the slot with that. It's uh, yeah. It's not ideal, but let's uh, see if it'll work. mark this out with the knife. I think I'm going to chisel this out. Before I do that, I think I can cut the end with a force and a bit. So it's it's 20 mil in diameter. So if I can find the center is there. should do it.
Right, after a few bashes with the old hammer, I managed to get that nice and flush into that piece of wood. Of course, now I've got to get it out again. Let's see if I can just lever it out a bit. Easier said than done. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Well, that's a tight fit. That's a tight fit. Okay. Well, that's the back done. Now I've got to do the front. Well, that was a messy afternoon's work. Now then, I have got this carved out and sanded roughly. Um, I've, I've broken through in a couple of places, so I'm gonna have to fill it. And that's what I'm gonna do now uh, and leave that to dry. And then I can come back and just sort it all out afterwards. So, just debating, I think actually, I feel it from the other side. No, no, I'll feel it from the front. Got some dust. Put some masking tape on the metal just inside there so hopefully it won't stick to it. If I squeeze this in as much as I can. Right, well I think I'll leave this to dry and um, clear up this mess. Okay, after quite a bit more sanding and fine sanding, we are left with this, which I think is okay. It's not quite as subtle as the one that Carolyn had drawn, but I've got to allow for the, the width of the uh, strings there. And I think that does it. So what I'm gonna do is glue the metal in here. You can see the filler that I put in uh, has, has filled this indent what, what I did I, I, I went too deep with the force and a bit that was the problem but never mind uh, I think we'll be okay um, I'm going to glue the metal in uh, with some arrow dye now this is slow setting two part epoxy um, don't give me plenty of time to fiddle around with it plenty in that end. I think that should do it. I should just put some on the end of this. Let's 
going to use this veneer clamp with some uh, carpet underlay to uh, squash that down. I think that will do the job. a bit longer. <laughs> I think that should do the trick. The challenge with that tail stop is going to be drilling the holes for the strings because um, I've got this idea that I can hide the end of the strings in a hole. Yeah, it's hard to explain, so <laughs> you're gonna have to wait till the next episode. Uh, when I do that, now then, while that glue is curing, um, off camera I made some more struts. These are gonna form the X braces on the, the top of the guitar. And I'm going to do it slightly differently um, from a conventional acoustic, but I'll talk about that later. I've also got one uh, third uh, uh, brace here, which I, I need to shape as well. So uh, I'm going to just shape these braces first. I've, I've marked out on this top the, uh, the outline of the guitar. So I'm going to cut that out as well. And then, um, I think that'll probably be it for this video. So I'm going to get on. Okay, well that's the uh, braces trimmed up and tidied up and the top rough cut to size. So there's not much more I can do today. I think I'm going to call this video a day. Thank you very much again for watching and thank you for all those comments that you send me. I'm very grateful and you know be as critical as you like. I mean I learned from those comments so thank you very much indeed. Well, I'll see you soon, and in the meantime, stay safe. Cheers. Mm -hmm.